Hey guys, Troy here. These, as you know, are the messages for the Crossing Fellowship Church. We're glad that you're here, glad that you've tuned in. We've been working on the Gospel of John, working our way through the Gospel of John. And we are in, we are in as I said, the Gospel of John chapter 8. And we're beginning with verse 30 today. And our focus is truth and freedom and the connection between those things, uh, those realities. Let me read to you, beginning in John chapter 8, verse 30. As he said these things, many believed in him. And then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you really are my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I want to pause right there. What is a disciple? The disciple is a willing slave, someone who puts themselves underneath a teacher, an apprentice is kind of a modern day sort of an example. And a disciple hangs on the word of his master. The teachings of his master order his steps, guide his life, help to determine his conduct, his operation in the world. Jesus is saying that if you're my disciples, let's read this again. If you continue in my word, you really are my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What is truth? Well, there's a lot of confusion about what is truth. And contrary to what our modern culture teaches, truth is absolute. All truth claims are really absolute truth claims. For example, if you were to say, there is no such thing as absolute truth, well, that is that is a narrow and exclusive truth claim that there are no there are no absolute truths self-defeating self-defeating statement truth is something that is true for all people of all ages of all times transcultural truth is transcultural truth is not something we create it is something we discover Truth, as Norman Geisler put it, is telling it like it is. Truth is simply telling it like it is. And that's what Jesus is doing here. And I believe that what he's doing, he's doing in love. And he's, he's being obedient to his Father. So he said, if you really are my disciples, you will continue in my word. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I want to say that God's truth always overcomes the enemy's lies. Truth always overcome, comes. Truth brings freedom. Jesus himself, Jesus himself is the embodiment of truth. Jesus doesn't just tell the truth. He is the truth. He said this about himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is, was God's only son who came to earth, was without sin, and yet he offered himself and died on a cross to pay for the sins of humanity. And he was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. Now, telling it like it is means me telling you that Jesus is the only way, as you will see, to be freed from sin's power. Let's continue reading. We are descendants of Abraham, they answered him, and we have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say we will become free? National freedom was very important to the Jews, you know, Ironically, they were enslaved in Egypt for many, many years, right? And then during the dispersion, they were also carried off into slavery. But this God's promise to Abraham, to the Jews, in, in uh, Genesis 12, I think around verse 23, freedom is an important part of that. For, that. for that promise to be fulfilled, for that promise to be true, that Israel would bless all the nations of the world, Freedom has to be a part of that. And they saw themselves as free. But Jesus is going to point out here that there is a difference between political freedom and moral freedom in the eyes of God. We've never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say we will become free? Verse 34, Jesus responded, Truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. 
A slave does not remain in the house forever, but a son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free, then you are really free indeed. He repeats himself. The fact that we need to be set free would indicate that we are slaves to something. And what Jesus points out here is that we, anyone who sins is a slave to sin. As Americans, we cherish our freedom. That is a big part of what we see in our world today, that the tension that we, we want to guard and protect our freedoms. Sometimes this puts us at conflict with one another even. But it's part of our identity as Americans. And it was for these folks here. And it, I'm sure it was shocking to hear from Jesus that they were slaves to sin. But this is reality. You can, you can uh, also read the Apostle Paul's writings in Romans chapter 6. That tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. The wages of sin is death. We have a sin problem in our world. Anyone who sins is a slave to sin. But, but let me say this, it, we are stuck. We are helpless in that position. But we don't have to remain there. And this is what Jesus is telling them. Let's go back and read this again. A slave does not remain in the household forever, but a son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The son has the power of emancipation. He has been, he has been given that authority by the father that the son can set us free from the slavery of sin and death. You know, a slave can live in the house for many, many years, but that doesn't make him a son. A slave can live with the family for decades, but that doesn't mean he is a son. He won't receive the inheritance. In the end, he's just a slave. And that's the comparison Jesus is making for these Jews, that, yeah, you may be Abraham's descendants, but really, you are slaves to sin. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. So let me, let me, let me say this. Are you a slave to sin or have you been set free from the power of sin? Only Jesus Christ can set you free. You must receive the gospel message concerning him. Now look, being set free from the penalty and the presence of sin in our lives does not mean that we don't struggle. This is called sanctification. This is the project process of God working the hell out of us, teaching us what it means to be more and more like his son. Jesus said to them, I know you're Abraham's descendants, but you're trying to kill me because my word has no place among you. I speak what I have seen in the presence of the father. So then you do what you have heard from your father. Jesus is sharing with them what the Father told him. He has seen the Father. He has been with the Father. And he came to earth for the purpose of bringing this message to humanity. This is truth. They were so... It's the word I want to use. They were so puffed up. They were, these, these Jews were so puffed up, so full of themselves, so focused on their religious heritage that they could not see the reality of their, their brokenness. And rather than run to the one who could set them free, they were plotting his death. And Jesus knew, Jesus knew that what, this was what was in their heart. If you were Abraham's children, Jesus told them, you would do what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me. Jesus has got their number. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing what your father does. We weren't born of sexual immorality, they said. We have one father, God. Jesus told them, if God were your father, 
you would love me because I came from God and I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. Why don't you understand what I say? Because you cannot listen to my words. You are of your father the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks. He speaks from his own nature. Some translations would say his native tongue because he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Who among you can convict me of sin? Jesus said, if I'm telling you the truth, if I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? The one who is from God listens to God's words. And this is why you do not listen, because you are not from God. If you want to be a child of God, you must receive the Son. There is no freedom from slavery to sin and death, except through the Son, receiving the sacrifice that He has offered and made on your behalf. You know, the Lord knows what's in our heart. Let me ask you this. Have you received the Son? Have you received Jesus Christ? Have you opened your heart to Him? Have you believed the truth concerning who He is? As I said at the very beginning of this video, God's Son, who was without sin, and He came to earth living a sinless life, it willingly went to the cross, the Lamb of God to pay for the sins of mankind. You must confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart concerning Jesus. Jesus is the doorway. Jesus is the gate, that narrow gate that leads to eternal life. This is truth. This is telling it like it is. My encouragement, my call to you, if you have not, is to receive the Son. Loving God means loving the Son. And it means living out what we learn in His Word. As His disciples, you know, there's a big difference in believing in Jesus and being a disciple. Which are you? The goal here is discipleship. The goal is learning to walk with to be more and more like Jesus. This is not something we do on our own, but we do with the help, the power of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the fellowship of the saints. This week, as you see the chaos in our world and the struggle and the, the angst and the conflict and the pain and the evil, I challenge you to be reminded of the truth that Jesus came to set man free from sin, from slavery to sin. And for us to get to that place, we have to wake up and realize the seriousness of our plight. And in, in wrapping this up and segueing in to next week's focus, I wanna say there are only two fathers. There is the truth, and there is the father of lies. I'll say this again next week, because I think it's really important. How do you know the difference? The father of lies is always working to obscure the truth of the gospel, to keep us from seeing the truth regarding the son. We see this in the lives of the disciples. He's lying to us about God. He's lying to us about the Son. He is twisting Scripture, veiling the mind. He is lying to you about you. He's lying to you about others. And he's always seeking, as I said already, to obscure the truth regarding the Son from us. And he's always attacking the image of God in you. I'll leave you with this thought. This concept, this idea that comes into the human mind that we are no good, that we don't measure up, that we have no value, this comes from the father of lives. Yes, we are broken. Yes, we are 
enslaved to sin and only the Son can set us free, but that very reality shows God's love for us. It shows how he values us because he came to set us free and he paid the price for freedom. Have a wonderful day. This is Troy Pound telling it like it is. Know that Jesus loves you. I hope you've received the Son and that you've chosen to walk as a disciple. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.